Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski-Doo. What matters is what's next. Yamaha conquers snow. And by FXR Racing, full throttle addiction. So the North America's top snowmobiler competition has been a pretty big thing for the past two seasons. And the first year's winner, Troy Burt, was someone who I think inspired all of us at Snow Tracks and hopefully all of you out there as well. Um, I mean, just with his attitude of nothing's gonna stop me. And the truth is after spending a fair bit of time with him, being at, um, at heydays with him, it'd just be perfect to go out and ride with this guy and see what it's all about. See how he, you know, how much he hangs it out there, how much he dangles, because uh, he sure talks a lot about it. I thought, hey, let's put something together, called Troy up and he said, well, you know, I'm out in Alberta right now, but tell you what, I'll come back to Newfoundland, we'll meet up, we'll go for a good ride. So for this trip, we're riding in Newfoundland. It's on the east coast of Canada. I'm from Ontario, which is kind of central Canada. Obviously we needed to fly out there. I didn't want to drive. So we jumped on a plane and sure enough, we could make it right into the town that we were going to be riding with Troy from. The only thing was, we wanted to grab some brand new skidoos and so a quick call to skidoo got us hooked up with them but the dealership that we were going to work with which is notre dame recreation was a few hours away cool thing was troy's a few hours away where he flies into so he was coming right up past the dealership he grabbed the sleds threw them on his sled deck for us and and brought them in and i mean we were pretty pretty stoked because skidoo hooked us up with two brand new 2017 uh 850 summit sps well we're in deer lake it's been a uh, good day flying it's snowing here it was snowing in Halifax all the way over. So excited about that. We're gonna ride with Troy Burt, who's North America's top snowmobiler year one winner. And I'm excited because I have no idea what to expect. Hey, hello, how you doing? Oh, not much. We're just uh, just trying to leave the airport here, figuring out where we're going. Do you want to go down for breakfast at seven or something like that? And head out at eight or something? Is that is that a good time or is that too late? Or too late? So we flew into Deer Lake because that's right where Troy wanted to ride out of. It's close to this place called uh, Gross Morn National Park. And it's, I guess, the only national park in all of Canada that you can ride snowmobiles in, which is pretty cool. Oh, Deer Lake Motel, they said, was supposed to be a good restaurant. Troy will tell us where it's good tomorrow. Tonight we're on our own. It's an adventure. Before this trip, I told Troy, I said, hey man, you might as well bring along one of your buddies, one of your the guys that you like riding with. So we brought along Adam and I mean, these two guys, they're like just the most solid people. We all started off a little slow because it's a different time zone and, and the time zone's also, I think the only place I can think on earth that's got a, a 30 minute out time zone. So we literally met up at the hotel in the morning, headed out to the the gas station to make sure that we got our park passes and our trail passes and fill up the sleds with fuel, um, grab some some food and and uh, trail side lunches, some beef jerky or meat gum as we like to call it. The new summit is unfortunately in Alberta this trip. I live up there now, I work in Alberta and uh, sled out in BC and whatnot every chance I get. And I left this one home here so I could come home and have something sensible to use when I was, when I was around. Last year, after winning North America's Top Snowmobiler, I built a relationship with uh, the Snow Tracks team. Uh, they took me to Dallas and then to Heydays. And I was, I was trying to get them to come to Newfoundland to ride. And eventually I got the call. AJ said he was coming, so I got very excited. Well, me and my friend Adam Greening, we met uh, almost nine years ago. And uh, we've been riding every winter ever since. Uh, winter riding, snowmobiles, dirt bikes, sea -dews whatever we can, you know, we're, we're two active people. When he does something, I gotta do it. I gotta do it better. <laughs> or he gotta do it better than me. So I've known Troy for, like, like he said, about nine years now. Uh, we've gotten to be good buddies over the years. And uh, just recently, Troy had the opportunity to uh, ride the Snow Tracks television. And he called me up and uh, it was something that I was, I was gonna do. Let's take it home here, boys. It was, it was gonna be a great trip because when you get around people who are just really comfortable, they're snowmobilers, I mean, it feels like family. That's, that's what snowmobiling is all about. Anybody you run into, you know, as long as they don't have an ego, they're all good people. And, and Troy and Adam were gonna be, uh, we're gonna be good crew for this trip. We were gonna come out with a good story. And, and I could tell from the way they talk, the size of the bumpers on their sleds, we were gonna get into some gnarly stuff. 
What's the, what's the plan for today? Oh, uh, the plan is there is no plan. <laughs> is that the way the Newfoundlanders do it? That's how we Newfies do it. All right, onwards and upwards. First day of riding, uh, we went into the sinkhole. Uh, it's an area uh, just northwest of Cormac, Newfoundland. And uh, it's about a 35 kilometer ride in on a groomed trail. The sinkhole is a tourist attraction. People go in, there's just, it's a big, big hole in the ground. <laughs> to, to be blunt. In typical snow tracks fashion, when we show up somewhere, it's never like bluebird days and pristine weather. It's always the biggest snowstorm of the year coming in. And sure enough, uh, it seemed like central Newfoundland was about to get about 100 centimeters of snow. That's a pretty big snowstorm. We're gonna be riding right in the middle of this. Our first day riding into the St. Cole, we uh, experienced the backcountry tree riding. It was uh, fairly technical. We had some cornice drops, um, hopovers, had a few minor wipeouts. We don't have the big, long chute climbs of British Columbia and the Rocky Mountains. Our hills are short, steep, and quick. And usually, the run out is into trees. So you have to make sure if you don't make it, you get the machine stuck on the hill. The area that we were riding in was really cool because it's almost like you took the Rocky Mountains and shrunk them down. The hills are smaller, but there's still the snowpack. You've still got huge cornices. I mean, I'm talking, like avalanche terrain cornices, some places that we looked at and I thought, man, it'd be really cool to ride up there, but I just don't think we should. We got into some pretty cool stuff. We found some pockets of snow because it was blowing so much. We wanted to get off in the trees because we knew that that'd be where the powder packs up. We got, we got into all kinds of stuff. I mean, we were rolling sleds over and tipping them down hills. And it just stopped the sled dead. I went over the top and tumbled down. And then it starts coming down towards me. It got me locked in the tree there. I was between it and the tree. Oh, God. Because I went up above. <laughs> and I was looking and I said, you know, that might be pretty good. I think and it I would said, come from no. around the back side of those trees. Yeah. I think we could probably hit that just about wide open. And just, I mean, it's not going to throw too far, but maybe it'll just pop. Virgo? Yeah, I'm going to give it a try. <laughs> From the snowcross days, I'm always looking for some kind of a hit or some kind of a jump. I think Luke and I both do that whenever we go anywhere. We're always looking for that, that next big line and that next big jump. One area, we were filming, doing some side hilling and doing some cool riding, but I just noticed this one little hump and I thought, oh man, that, that'd gap right over this road just perfectly and sent into it at a pretty good pace. And sure enough, it was, it was a decent little gap jump. After that, I, I could see Adam from his uh, from his snowcross experience days, he was like, "Yeah, I'm going to do that too." And we we lined up another line that was even even better packed in, and he sends it over. He was recording when I was down like this. I thought I hit record and it turned it off. Do it again, Adam. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll try it one more time. Pass with me. I'll get some juice on her this time. <laughs> <laughs> Look nice. <laughs> it's fun, eh? Some of those like some of those little things that you just look at and you're kind of like, well, I can do that. I don't know. I think it could be good, you know, especially with a little, a little. You can see it in Troy's eyes. At first, he was like, no, no, I don't need to do that. And as Adam told me, Troy, when everybody else does it, he's going to do it. And if nobody else does it, he's going to do it. It was a little uh, stormy, so me and Troy decided to take the guys into the sinkholes, uh, the scenic area, and there's some nice tree riding yeah, in there. I read everything here. <laughs> it's not really like I know what I'm talking about. The Lamont sinkhole. So the sinkhole is this weird anomaly out in the middle of, it seems like absolute nowhere, but it's right off the sled trail. It is. It's got to be every bit of 100 feet down into it, but I think it's probably more like 125 or 150 down in. It almost looks like you could ride that on your butt down. Yeah. yeah. It looks like a couple people have. I'm going to go for it, and I'll tell you what, that was, uh, it was quick going down in. Well, is it just uh, going down? Let us know what it looks like from the bottom, eh? Sure enough, on the way through, you see these holes where it must be just the uh, the heat from the earth coming up and out is melting from the bottom up. And there's holes that go down five and six feet. So good thing we didn't fall into any of them. So uh, we ended up sliding down on our butts like a bunch of kids down at the bottom of the sinkhole. Hold 
I was 12 years old, GT snow racer, no problem. Get down in the bottom. It's really cool. There's this big ice structure that comes out from the top. And I guess in the summertime, there's a nice waterfall running in there. And down in the bottom, it's just all old shale stone. You know, there's huge icicles hanging off the ceiling. You got to watch out for and, and this is the kind of thing that if you come out here, you want to go check it out because I don't know anywhere else that I've seen in North America that's got a big massive hole like this that you can snowmobile to. And you can walk right down in the bottom, you can get some pictures. It's neat because the sound down there is very dead because you're completely surrounded. This is the first time I've been down here. It's pretty cool. Then we decided, okay, well, it's time to get out of here. And you look back up at the hill and you go, well, it's, you know, it's snow, it's not gonna be that hard getting out. And sure enough, it, it's like, it's almost solid ice going up and out. So we all, uh, we all, made it up and out but it was a little interesting at times and truth be told probably the most uh, aggressive thing was the cameraman mark getting out with the tripod and a camera and filming us as we're doing it i mean i guess on top of that troy doing it with uh, with five toes is uh, is pretty aggressive too so we uh, we had a good time we enjoyed it and it's cool because i've heard people talk about the sinkhole in newfoundland but i didn't know what it was and i didn't know where it was now i do It was just a great day. I really enjoyed myself. We were all pretty darn tired at the end of this. I mean, we're only riding at 1,600 to 2,000 feet, which our bodies aren't working all that hard, but we we're pretty confident it was gonna be an early night to sleep and uh, get some food in our belly and get ready for day two. Stay tuned to next week's episode of Snow Tracks, where I continue my ride with Troy and Adam and explore even more of what Newfoundland has to offer. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. So it's no surprise, Yamaha's built a new mid-sized snowmobile. With the rebirth of the snow scoot, it wouldn't be right for us, and by us, I mean full-size adults, to do the test ride. So we enlisted the help of a mid-sized professional, and we asked her what she thought. Well, it goes really fast, and the engine, it has nine horsepower, and like, I love the color, and it's, and it's the perfect size for me. With very little in this category, it's pretty obvious just how excited mid-size sledders are to get a vehicle that fits their needs and their capabilities, and gets them away from two-up riding. I, I'd be able to, ride and usually I'm sort of bored when I'm with my dad, but now I'm not when I ride this. While the snow scoot's horsepower numbers seem pretty small, it's actually quite capable and keeps up with mom and dad with ease. And when it comes to the handling, well, I'll let Natalie tell you about that. Riding the snow scoot is even easier than riding my TTM. I feel really comfortable. Natalie is a very nice young lady, so we ask what the level of sharing would be should her friends show up and ask her for a ride. They would be like, can I ride it? And I'm like, nope, it's my ride. With 4.5 inches of suspension travel up front thanks to a double A-arm setup, as well as 4.5 inches in the rear, the Scoot is very capable and it delivers all of this through the use of hydraulic shocks all the way around. When I'm riding through the bumps, it's really smooth. One of the biggest areas of complaint when it comes to little folks is cold digits. When their hands get cold, they're not having any fun. And the snow scoot comes with one serious set of hot grips. I can sort of ride on my own because when I'm with my dad, as I said earlier, it's really boring. So if I ride this, I'll be more happy and excited when we go snowmobiling. The fact that the all-new snow scoot is completely legal and able to be ridden on the trails gives parents a whole new option for taking little ones along for the ride. In the past, it was a 120cc sled that would keep your kids busy in the backyard, but it stayed there. Now the snow scoot can bridge the gap for kids who are way too big for a 120, but not big enough for a fan-cooled or older sled like a Bravo. The snow scoot allows parents to buy one sled that'll take kids safely through the transitionary years and allows them to get out on the trail and ride with mom and dad on their own. And when you link the 200cc Yamaha engine with a 2.1 gallon fuel tank and a one inch Camso Cobra track, the snow scoot will go the distance with ease. 
With Natalie being a first time snow scoot rider, we wondered just how much she might like the snow scoot. Did she think it was hard to handle or was this the perfect fit and the perfect sled? We asked her for a rating from one to 10 to keep it simple. Out of one in 10, I'd say 10. It was super califragilisticexpialidocious. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. It would be easy to focus all of our excitement about Arctic Cat's 2018 ZR8000ES on its motor. It's what we've been waiting for, waiting a long time for. So getting excited about it is perfectly reasonable. But the truth is, there's a lot more new stuff going on with this sled that in terms of real world usability is almost equally as exciting. Okay, maybe not equally, but it is exciting nonetheless. So let's start off today talking about that stuff and we'll end by talking about the motor. Now the first piece of newness we need to discuss is the most obvious and that's the bodywork. Underneath the bodywork, the chassis of the sled is the same as the 2017 models, but the bodywork itself has been completely reworked to be sleeker, sexier, and most importantly, more functional and easier to use. The side panels are the same as those found on the turbo with the great big air scoops on both sides. They attach to the sled with unbelievably slick quarter turn fasteners and the way they hinge open gives greater access to all the goodness hiding underneath. The new look is more streamlined. Arctic Cat says it's more aerodynamic and it's way more functional. It's a winner and we love it. But underneath that new bodywork is another big change you may not see, but you'll definitely feel. Arctic's new Rapid Response 2 Primary and Boss Secondary are kind of a big deal in how they deal with a problem no other clutch does. This clutch combo has an auto belt adjustment system, and let's not downplay how awesome this is. Everybody knows one of the key elements of keeping your sled running at its peak is to keep your belt adjusted correctly. This can be a bit of a pain. With a new Rapid Response 2 Primary and Boss Secondary, it's all automatically done for you. Another thing this primary clutch does is lower the starting ratio by 12.5% without changing the final ratio. This means no change in top speed, but the new starting ratio allows for smoother clutch engagement and less belt wear at takeoff speeds. Does it work? Well, we absolutely did notice that this sled engages very smoothly, but we initially couldn't decide if this was due to the clutch or to the SeaTec 2 800's improved bottom end smoothness. In the end, we have to conclude it's a combination of both. Now let's get to the biggest news from Articat in 2018, the new SeaTech 2 800. Now the whole industry has already said this multiple times, but I'm gonna say it again. This was a long time coming. SeaTech 2 is a semi-direct injection system, similar to Polaris's clean fire system in that it is not direct injected like Skidoo's E-Tech. Also, the SeaTech 2 800 is not just the old 800 with semi-direct injection. This is a completely new motor. And thank goodness for that. Yes, the old 800 did make good horsepower up top, and if you were really pushing it hard, it could be fun to ride. But anyone who tried to ride that motor slowly or smoothly knew that it really suffered down low. This new engine could be described as ultra torquey. It pulls like a truck down low and in the mid-range, yet still pulls strong up top. On top of that, the SeaTech 2 allows for cleaner operating, smoother running, better starting, and a more efficient motor. And these are all the things the old 800 definitely was not. We put a good amount of miles on our 2018 ZR8000, and here's what we really think about this motor. It's a home run. It's everything we thought it could be, and then even a little bit more. The rest of this Articat ZR8000 ES is on the basic side, which is okay because it is a base model. We're even okay with the non-adjustable shocks, again, because it's a base model. Even though these shocks are preload and oddly enough rebound adjustable only, this sled rides amazing and that's no overstatement. Arctic Cat has got its suspension settings dialed. From small stutter bumps to bigger chop, that slide action skid frame soaks up anything you can throw at it, as does the race front end. Higher end models with higher end adjustable shock packages and consequently higher price tags can be set up to ride even better. But in the case of this base model, we're not complaining one bit. The same goes for handling. This is the best handling Arctic Cat snowmobile we've ever tested. Turn-in is precise and predictable. It holds its line all the way through the corner. It keeps the skis on the ground, and yet it doesn't dart in any significant way. 
2017 Arctic Cats weren't bad handling sleds by any stretch of the imagination, but this 2018 model is just that much better. Our final thoughts on the 2018 Arctic Cat ZR8000 ES. It has everything you need and nothing you don't. Electric start, reverse, a Ripsaw 125 track, and a set of good quality, albeit limited adjustability, Fox Zero RC shocks. It also has a motor that will leave you with a smile on your face both when you hit the throttle and when you hit the pumps. Finally, it has a price tag that is, in the 800 class at least, affordable. These are just some of the reasons the 2018 Arctic Cat ZR8000 ES has become a sled we highly recommend. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris. See endless possibilities. MBRP Performance Exhaust. Race Inspired. Trail Proven. And by Arctic Cat. Share our passion. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the like button and then subscribe to Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel that's constantly being updated with fresh content.